Oh, look, it's not an insignificant decision. It's 165,000 people who we're going to give a one-off residence to a pathway to residence. And we've had to work through those issues, the implications of those issues. Um, uh, when this piece of work started out, um, there were specific sectors that were asking for pathways to residence. Over time, it emerged, obviously, that um, you know, it, it, the, the, re the resolution had to cut across all sectors. It's a big piece of policy work, and as the Prime Minister said, uh, probably one of the biggest immigration policy decisions that will be made um, uh, in our living uh, memory. So um, it took time. Look, in terms of that, we acknowledge the difficulties that uh, people have been through, um, but I think um, this morning they woke up to a pretty comprehensive resolution to some of the uncertainty uh, that they have had and their employees have had. Critical. How many critical workers did we lose because you didn't fix this fast? Um, oh, it's, it's hard to say. Um, if I look at the number of um, temporary visa holders who left New Zealand in the last year compared to the previous year as the borders have closed, that has decreased. Um, so while, it was, uh, while some people have left, I think if you look at the, the magnitude of the people that we are um, giving the pathway to residence here, 165,000. Uh, uh, an overwhelming majority of people now have uh, a pathway to residence uh, and therefore a pathway to permanent residence and uh, a pathway to citizenship now here in New Zealand. Um, considering where they were um, uh, in the previous months, I think that is a, uh, a welcome uh, change for them and that's uh, what we've been hearing so far. How do, you, how do you trust Immigration New Zealand to achieve this given they've watched the announcements? Look, that look, that uh, as, as the Prime Minister has said, um, one of the things that I have been riding them hardest on uh, is if we make a commitment like this, then people aren't waiting uh, long periods of time. Um, I don't want to get into boring detail, but the current process is paper-based, so they've had um, some disruptions to the likes of processing when they go into Alert Level 4. This will all be online. Uh, we are, because of the broadness of uh, the criteria, um, some of those checks now will be relatively simple. We will keep the rigour in the in the checks. There'll be health checks and uh, New Zealand police checks done, as people would expect to be done, to make sure that those processes um, are as stringent as they usually should be. If the majority will be processed within a year, so that means some will be processed outside of a year, and what will the average time be? Because that's, that's it's not it, considerably fast. So it's, it's coming fast in, there, there are two tranches. Um, I think there are about just a little over 20,000 people who have an express, expression of interest or an application in there first. They will be prioritised um, uh, first, those with an EOI with um, dependent children 17 years and over. Obviously we want to make sure they're dealt with so they can become domestic students if that's possible. Uh, then it will depend uh, on the window that opens uh, in, on the 1st of March next year uh, and people coming through. So uh, I guess um, the, the message will be um, people getting organised to make sure they've got everything they need to, to get done uh, to get that process through. But again, we've streamlined the process. The process is online. Um, because th these applications uh, are going in, we're expecting the demand for the likes of other visitor, uh, visa extensions to decrease. Uh, and as we can, uh, resources will be prioritised to this um, processing of these resident visas. So you bringing on Minister, uh, 165,000, does that mean that in future years you won't be able to issue as many residences? In the past there's been a uh, guideline around 100, 90 to 100,000 every two years. So what does this mean for the next few years? Uh, two things. If, if we're talking about residency um, applications for the next three or four years, and given uh, the situation with the border, we'd expect the residency um, application numbers to tail off for a bit. Again, uh, in the wider policy sense, we kind of outlined what we wanted to do in the uh, with rebalance work. We're also doing a review of the uh, settings around the skilled migrant category in terms of points and other settings there as well. This gives us a lot of breathing space to be able to do that work and to have conversations with a whole lot of sectors that have relied on those residency pathways in the past uh, to have those discussions about what we would like to do with the rebalance and also what that might look like in terms of what residence looks like uh, after we complete that review. Why, why not? I mean, the, the tales of split migrant families have, um, you know, it's guarded national sympathy, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Why aren't they included in that first tranche? So um, some of them may be. Over. If they're in uh, the uh, skilled migrant category already, if an applicant is there and they've got uh, partners or dependents who are offshore, they will be. They will obviously be part of um, uh, the first tranche of, of applications. Um, the difficulty has always been with those families uh, is the ability uh, to, uh, if they've got a border exception, to get the likes of matters isolation. Um, again, we acknowledge the dif difficulty that. Um, that close those closed border settings and our 
obvious um, demand uh, and uh, supply issues uh, with managed isolation. What I do think for those families um, uh, will be of great comfort is that um, where they have not had a pathway to residence, they will now, and those offshore dependents and, uh, and their partners will be able to be included um, in those um, uh, applications. And when they are done, and they can get a, a, a managed isolation space, uh, if, if that is still the setting in place, and then they'll be able to come in New Zealand and have a long-term future. Thank you. Okay, thanks, thanks.